Enter the crib. Your strike back sit rep starts in three, two, one. Wait, do we go on zero? All right, Meebers, we are back. Uh, the season is over. The series is over-ish for now. We're going to keep holding out hope. And we are really excited to bring back the guy who makes everything happen and breaks all of our hearts, executive producer, showrunner, writer, Jack Lothian. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. Hello, and sorry. <laughs> But only so sorry. Only just like a little bit sorry. A little tiny sorry. <clears throat> so we have uh, a bit of a surprise for you, Jack. Um, we've been a little upset with you. Uh, okay. I bet you couldn't tell. I, you couldn't tell at all. <laughs> oh, that's, that's And we, we had actually had this whole plan. We were going to go back to our preseason podcast, find the moment where you said, oh, uh -huh. I'd never kill Cheddar's. <laughs> And just play it for you. Okay. But then, okay, that's, you yeah. know, we reached out to someone who we thought should more, oh. more, you know, <laughs> hop on and, and have a little say. Uh, and so if she answers her Skype. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Verada. Somewhere <laughs> on the screen is an unfamiliar face, and that is Kim, the other oh. uh, crib member who does some of the live tweeting. So Verada, Kim, Kim, Verada. And, uh, and yeah, so we were just giving Jack some shit for, you know, saying to us in the preseason that uh, he would never kill Cheddars. And we were going to play that <laughs> recording for him. But then I was like, but who better to bring up Cheddars <laughs> than Cheddars? So thank you for coming back, Rada. <laughs> no, thanks but, for having but, me back. <laughs> but to be fair, it's not like I sent V an email from HBO <laughs> saying, uh, <laughs> let, 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 not let the cup or anything. So... Uh, I, I believe my exact phrase was, I have no plans to kill Chetri at this point in time. Just to be so. clear, I have no plans. <laughs> <laughs> that, that does seem like a big promise, Jack. I mean... It was. It was a big promise, yeah. And unlike so many big promises in my life, uh, I, I failed to <laughs> stop with it. But in, in my defence, I wrote the scene where she got shot and then I was very tired. And the idea of deleting it and doing something different <laughs> just felt so difficult. <laughs> there, 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 was, there was another scene that, that I sat there and I showed Nula and I said, what, what about this? And it was in episode eight when they were interrogating Zayef and everyone leaves the room and Chetri comes over and then she grabs his head and says to him, get your fucking shit together. And it turns out she's Russian. <laughs> and uh, uh, we sat there. And Nula was like, but have you planned this, like, from the start? And I was like, no, no, I haven't, no. And she was so why didn't she help Katrina last season? And I was like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And it would have been a big betrayal of everything, you know, that uh, Chetri was. But uh, it would have been exciting. Uh, yeah. yeah, that would... <laughs> Verada, yeah, Verada, how do you feel about your Russian accent? Um, do you know what? I'm glad that I was never tested on my Russian <laughs> accent. It's not, it's not great. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. All right. So tell me, I guess I, I want to hear from Barada. I want Jack to hear from Barada. How did it feel when you got that script and realized you were going to take a bullet to the head, despite Jack's assurances that that, that would not happen? Um, I, by the time I got the script, I had had a week to prepare for it. And I was, I honestly, even when they called me to tell me, I was excited, honestly, <laughs> because I mean, I would have, I've made it to almost the end. And like Jamie said as well, you know, um, I think he said it in the declassified, uh, Cinemax video that, you know, if, if you, if you if you have if you get an ending that's you know towards the end it's going to be something you're, you're going on you're leaving on a high so I was super excited and like I said to Jack after that call I think I said oh, I've never died on screen before I'm looking forward to it <laughs> and then Jack's response was you don't actually have to die on screen. <laughs> we're not asking you to go that far <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> just to be clear yeah, but it was a close thing. 
in that uh, in that venue. It felt mm. like like death. So so that was close enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was. I think that's one of the worst locations I've ever yeah. been in. It was just something else and it was really funny that you said that thing about i didn't realize that um they had some kind of black magic yeah some kind of black magic history like they, i i didn't know anything about that and i had told deb and kelsey that there was something about that place some kind of weird energy that I just oh. yeah there was yeah yeah so uh yeah but it was it was a I remember when uh, Yaz came back and she came on. She came on to set in that horrible place, and and we just got an early cut of your death. And I remember showing it to her, and we we couldn't have the sound up because they were filming. But even just watching it silent, you know, she started the tears welled up, and we're all <laughs> sitting there, kind of choked up. Poor old Chetri's, poor old Chetri's death. Uh, yeah. Although there's a there's a guy on Reddit who just says you deserved it because you were a wow traitor. traitor. <laughs> <laughs> he just said, said he said it like three times. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it depends how you look at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, th I thought it was, um, it was certainly interesting to be able to compare what I would do compared to what Chetri would do. I, I mean, I think she's got a lot of guts to run off from the team. I think I would have been the kind of person, if I discovered something like that, I would have just been pissed off at everyone and just sat stewing in my anger for the rest of <laughs> the time I, w I don't think i'd have had the guts to run off and try and clear their names i would have sort of given up and said fuck it we're all fucked you know um and, and do, do you think she ever did anything that you disagreed with for the character that you felt like oh chetri wouldn't do that um it's, it's honest time brother it's honest time. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, i it's weird because when I first read that she drove off with the hard drive. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't, I don't know, I didn't, it didn't quite make sense to me. But then when I read episode nine and the history with her dad and all of it just made sense to me, all of that, it's just, you know, in her blood to stand by her. And it's historically throughout, you know, all of the episodes, last season and this season as well like her dad who you know makes made the tough decision to not talk to his daughter for 10 years you know like it, it, she makes tough decisions um because she's she, she's just she's going to stand by her principles however much it hurts her and however much it hurts those around her so it it kind of made episode 9 sort of tied in made sense every made sense of everything else for me like, I, but it didn't feel so out of character that I would have emailed you about it. You know, I sure. I didn't feel it just it was just a oh I gotta oh, sort of I'm I'm I'm, I'm that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm the snitch. <laughs> but yeah, it was. And the only other thing that again I thought was maybe out of character was at the episode at the beginning of episode nine when she sent the message to Novin, but then it turned out to be a you know a trick location. I remember reading that. And, and you know it pings up in the OCI, and I was like, she, Chetri would never give away her location like that. That's dumb. How dumb has this girl gotten all of a sudden? And then you know it turned out. So I think everything that I, I think those two were literally the only two that I've thought. No, they seemed a bit odd, but it made sense. They all made sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Sure. I was watching this show called Mysteries of the Abandoned. And in one of the episodes, it was actually quite interesting. They had an abandoned, I think it was a military facility in Zagreb on the island of V. And I was just wondering, because some of it looked kind of familiar, I'm just wondering, were you guys filming over there? There's like a uh, secret tunnel that used right. to be a and, military and, um, base. Was it under? Did they have an underwater sort of? A, did they have a water entrance to it? Yeah, well? there's like a big concrete yeah. keyhole yeah. that you can go in. It was for parking a submarine. Yeah, we we, we didn't. We, we looked at it, but unfortunately, we couldn't. Uh, what we wanted to do there, we couldn't do it. But yeah, it looked like a real James Bond sort of uh, location. Yeah, I was sort uh, of watching, I mean, going, "Oh, that looks like a strike back." <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it was too nice for us to to shoot in. <laughs> It has it to look like it's nice going to fall on top of your head to make it subscribe. 
you've got to feel some kind of you know sense of peril in a striped back location so jack a couple minutes ago you were about to talk about um a hand double for verada yeah so 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 she'd been killed and she wasn't at work the next day or i can't remember what you're doing the next day you may have been doing a different scene elsewhere or, or you may have had the day off after the three days you'd spent in the sort of uh, or maybe it was like a week later whatever it was was i was walking through and i noticed all these lights were on in chetri's death chamber mm -hmm. as i got closer and closer i saw her hands on the table and i was like oh i didn't know v was in today and as i got closer and came around there was someone else's face <laughs> and it was uh, dressed as chetri uh, a hand double, but it was one of the creepiest moments because we're in this big dark place and they were just sitting waiting for people. Oh, uh, no. and it, was, it was honestly uh, quite terrifying uh, to see the sort of because uh, it was you and then you raised your head and it wasn't you. Ghost and, of Chetri. Uh, 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 Come back to haunt you for bad decisions. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm just not kidding. It was in the bad decision. It was a good decision. And Veronica said it was like her birthday. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, no, I was telling yeah. Kelsey like I'm a twin, so I don't get to have a birthday to myself very much. So in a way, on set, having people you know talk to me like it was my special day it was it was like yeah. a birthday. Yeah, that's yeah, good. good. I love no that. Cake. Well, Verona, thank you so much for coming on. We'll let you get yeah, on with your day. We you. just you know had to poke at Jack just a little bit, so we appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you, Jack, for such an amazing scene and, you know, yeah, for the best on-screen death anyone could ask for. So. Well, th thank you, V, for being Chetri and for, <laughs> for, for making Chetri. Uh, it was it was what V would do off camera when the camera stopped. Sometimes she'd just start, like, mucking around. And watching that sort of made me think, oh, God, there's, like, there's sort of more we can do with Chetri, which is sort of... Because you came, she came in quite straight-laced. And then the, I mean, V's fantastic improvisation in episode 10 of the Malaysia season when she gave the finger <laughs> to, to Novin just sort of summed up her character arc pretty well. A bad yeah, influence. Glad. Well, it was wonderful. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, talk to you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye. Well, thanks for putting up with that <laughs> the weirdness at the Thank beginning. You. Who's so, next? So <laughs> <laughs> Jack's accountability. Yeah. So, man, what a season. I mean, you killed Mac. You killed Cheddars. We yeah. have three, you know, loose threads in the wind at the end. And and we we want more. But congratulations on a hell of a season. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you for, for watching it. And then uh, sticking with it to the end, <laughs> and uh, proceeding it all. Uh, yeah, it's sort of once it got to that last, when it got to the last episode, did did you think anyone else might die, or were you quite confident that uh, we'd probably? No, I mean it. it seemed like Novin was going to die, <laughs> so. Uh, and I'm so glad he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I spent the whole episode like watching it like this, <laughs> yeah. not wanting to see that bullet that came out of nowhere that was going to kill one of them because I thought there's no way Jack is just going to let them all live at yeah. this point. Uh, but think, he did. Yeah. And, but yeah, I, I, I spent I, the yeah. whole time going, no, no, don't go there. Yeah. Ah. I, I think in the last episode, it can be particularly sort of tough to see people die because you don't sort of get the episode afterwards where you get to sort of process it. Mm. Uh, but then again, you know, exactly. <laughs> next time around. You never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it felt, I can't imagine how difficult it must be to write a series ending. Um, because it feels like nobody's, nobody's ever totally happy. Because, you know, people want it wrapped up, or they don't want it wrapped up, or they want it, you know, this character to have gone off with this, or this person to have found happiness here. You know, so I can't imagine how how difficult that must be. Can you talk a little bit about what you wanted out of the episode. Yeah, I, I, I'd known for a while that was how we, how I wanted to end it, even before this season. I, I sort of wanted to sort of clear the decks a little and make it sort of stand alone. And I knew because we'd done such a great Scott and Stonebridge one that I didn't want it to be about the team being chased down by people. 
because n no matter what we did, it would always stand in comparison to that. And, and for me, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with, with that episode and I, I didn't want to revisit that. So I knew I wanted the team to be going on the front foot uh, and I knew I wanted them to be stealing money and to sort of uh, to have that sort of moral decision. And then while we were planning it, we heard about Triple Frontier, which came onto Netflix, which was about a group of soldiers who oh. steal money from a drug lord. So we did have a kind of wobble when I was like, oh, should, should I just scrap it? But then I thought, well, you know, I just won't watch Triple Frontier. And then <laughs> I can sort of, you know, I've watched it since. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. So, uh, so yeah, uh, so I sort of knew it. And I knew right from the start I had that final scene from before we started the season of the three of uh, them talking. So I knew uh, at that point Chetri had just left because she'd sort of, the team had got her out, and, and, but she was away. So uh, I, I knew it sort of was going to end. It actually ended in a graveyard in the original one not a Mexican bar, but uh, pretty much word for word, it was sort of quite similar to, to, to how it was. And yeah, I, I wanted to try something that was fun. I, I think because Ep 6 was a special episode, it, it took up some of the space to move the plot forward that we'd normally spend. So it's sort of, there's that slightly odd Coltrane goes to a gulag and Coltrane leaves a gulag, but you could have spent a good episode yeah, yeah. Dealing, dealing with the stuff there. And, and that was a slightly tricky thing because there was an option just to not have him go there but it felt like such a good end for Ep 9 but in Ep 10 you sort of have to deal with it quite quickly in order to get on with the plot so but but overall uh, it was it was Bill was really keen to have a Bill Eagles was very keen to have boats and helicopters uh, and I was slightly reticent because the sort of boat stuff we've done hasn't mm -hmm. been maybe as exciting as, as it could have been, I mean, compared back to, to sort of uh, season three or, or season four, depending on where you are, and, and sort of some of the stuff in Columbia. Uh, but Bill was like, don't worry, I will give you the best sequence, you know, I, I can do. And uh, he had that crazy look in his eyes. So I was like, okay, let's let's write one. So uh, so, so that was useful. I mean, we found that town and that was perfect. Let's, let's put the, the vault there and let's have a big getaway. And then... Uh, that's what we did. Well, it's beautiful. It's very bond. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah very I, bond. And, and uh, originally, there was going to be a sort of tease at the ending that uh, I, th I think I said this in the behind the scenes that uh, that uh, there was going to be a satellite watching them as we pulled up and we'd sort of hear the crackle of communications and it'd be a feeling like, ooh, that somebody's watching them. But when we got to sitting there in the edit, it was just like, let, let's not even try that. It's sort of, it's the perfect last shot. Yeah. Uh, let's sort of leave it there. I mean, I don't know where they're going. I mean, Novin's walking off down the beach. I, I guess she's got a plan. <laughs> uh, you know, because why it takes the car. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe she'd park down the beach, you know, and Coltrane's staying to drink, and that's sort of quite acceptable. But, uh, yeah. Well, I said that to Lynn, I, uh, Lynn, that, you know, as that drone shot was pulling up, I... I was just watching the edges of, of the shot, waiting yeah, for someone takes... to come in, and you know, I was like, this, this can't be it. There's got to yeah. be, why in this drone shot, there's got to be people coming for them. But, yeah. you know, you just left it there. <laughs> Ambiguous. Uh, just in case. Yeah. They have to go save Zarkova, and Stonebridge and Novin do that with Train. <laughs> They're all out there somewhere yeah yeah that's that i told Lynn that was my theory because it felt a little like l weird her leaving and i was like but i feel like it's jack not running himself into a corner <laughs> he can always bring them back <laughs> yeah I mean, I mean they're just going off to take stock of their lives because they've been with each other for sort of three years uh sort of day in day out so they haven't really had a break from each other. You know, they had a bit of a break between seasons when uh, they sort of got deactivated, but they were clearly all hanging out, spending time together. So it was sort of, yeah, they're, they're going off to be normal human beings. Those three? Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a, a line, of, there was an improvisation by 
Jamie, which unfortunately we just couldn't find a place for. But it's when uh, the the smaller vault door into the vaults, Novin's blowing it, and he says to Wyatt, you know, are you done with all this killing and stuff? Are you sure? And Wyatt says, yeah, it feeds a part of me. I don't want to have fed anymore. And then Jamie just rolled his eyes and went, good luck with that. <laughs> it was such a, such a lovely, uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> but uh, it sort of undermined the situation a little. Fair. I was wondering, you know, when after Mac died and then after Cheddar's died, we didn't sort of get our usual kind of tribute drink. Is there kind of a reason behind that or just... Yeah, the, 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 the one that they have uh, before they go on the mission to steal the money when they sort of all have a drink to... Uh, it is sort of meant to take the place of that one, uh, just so they're not constantly having to sort of or extra drinks, yeah. So, 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 so that was meant to sort of cover them all. You know. I, I'm curious about episode six, and and this is, I mean, I don't know if you, you, if you have anything to do with this or what, because one of the things we have sort of lamented is the lack of award attention that Strike Back yeah. gets, and episode six is just. I mean, it really is just an incredible episode of TV. Do you know if that will get put up for, for anything? I mean, I, I guess uh, probably not. I mean, I mean, I'd love Warren's performance to, to certainly, you know, get a nod. Uh, and, and who knows, maybe in the UK, Sky will, will, will do something with that. I'd, I'd like to think they would. Uh, I mean, certainly we've been doing, you know, I mean, the, season, the show's been doing quite well. But as far as I know... Uh, we will remain a, a cult hit, <laughs> you know, uh, which is a shame. But uh, yeah. you know, I, I think I think the show's always sort of had that sort of scrappy underdog quality, and uh, you know, it's it's one of the things we love about it. Well, is it? new viewers, <laughs> <Not really. laughs> new viewers are out there every day. I mean, every day there's something on yeah. Twitter or Instagram where like, oh, I just discovered this show, Strike Back. It's so great. It's like, yeah, yeah. it was. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, where were you? Yeah. You know, but I'm, but, I'm but yeah. it really was an amazing season. I mean, there, we couldn't ask for much more. I mean, everything happened and everything was just, everything about the season was intense. You know, the emotions were intense. The action was certainly intense. I'm wondering if there was anything along the way that was cut that you now wish hadn't been. Not, not in terms of, of what ended up on the screen and, and what we shot. I mean, there's different permutations of episode six where there was sort of more intense sort of an emotional versions. And sort of it, it was a, that was a tricky sort of juggling act to sort of try and get the balance. And uh, it's certainly something that, that kept me up at night for quite a while, sort of uh, hoping that we were getting it right. Uh, I mean, three and four were always meant to feel a bit more lighthearted. I mean, if, if it's lighthearted, put Novin's head in a bag. But uh, it, it sort of, uh, in terms of a sort of sunny strike back adventure with sort of uh, slightly outlandish characters, because I knew what was going to happen in sort of five and six. That, that I wanted to get a bit of fun along the way. And then uh, I, I don't think there was anything. I, I, I would have loved two more episodes I would, or I don't, maybe a double length final would, would have been nice because there were still bits and pieces that, that I would have loved to have you know, dug into for an extra episode, like what Wyatt had been up to, what Novin had been up to, co-training yeah. the Gulag, sort of stuff that we had to sort of race through. Uh, and certainly in the first draft of Ep 10, which was ridiculously long, there was a lot more sort of detail of that. Yeah, that would have been cool. And yeah. I do just wanted to do a thank you for all the films that we love that you sort of paid homage to throughout the season, like The Raid, La Femme Nikita. It, that was just really fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it, that, it's something guy from the raid. that guy from The Raid. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it was a shame because if, if we had got the dates down, if I'd been faster getting the script together in the first place and we got the dates down, I, I would have loved to have done him as a sort of somebody in an embassy, maybe even an ambassador who they had to protect, who then turns out to be a sort of kick-ass character. Because he sort of came in and sort of did sort of what Chep Chep did the season before in being sort of the hired killer who has the fight. 
And uh, I feel not that it was, we just ran out of time, not that it was lazy, but, but that was the one bit where I felt like we we're sort of repeating ourselves. You know, and, and Dan did kind of say, you know, what, what is the purpose of this? You know, because if it's just to get the guy from the raid in for a fight, then that's cool. You know, let's just double check what, what, what we're doing here. You know, and, and ultimately it was like, yeah, that, that's what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. But it, well, was, it was a good cool. point because we had sort of done it at exactly the same point in the previous season. So that, that was the one point where I was a little bit like, yeah, we're sort of covering familiar ground. But when you get a chance to get someone in like that, you sort yeah. of got to grab it. Oh, yeah. The fight was awesome. And he is so cool to watch and, and just really... And, you know, selfishly, I'm glad because I laughed so hard when his face popped up on the scene that my husband actually came in the room and was like, are you okay? And I was like, it's the guy for the raid. And he was like, why is that funny? I was like, it's hilarious. <laughs> I was like, oh, it was amazing. So I am I am personally, selfishly really glad you did it. But it also is a really good fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and and I think that that was a real tough one for 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 the cast because they had no time to sort of rehearse that one, and that was really, uh, you know, I mean, they went above and beyond the sort of call of duty of, uh, for for that one, and it was incredibly grateful because they would have been well within their rights to sort of be uh, sort of say, well, wait a second, we haven't had a chance to rehearse this properly. You know, this is this is a little bit, you know, you're asking too much of us at this stage of the season. But instead, they just dug in and uh, threw him about the place. <laughs> so yeah, that was <laughs> that was fantastic. So, what has been your favorite thing to write this season? Um, I mean, certainly F six, oddly, was the easiest to write because I, I just sort of sat down. It, I, it was I'd said to Paul Wilmshurst, oh, I've sort of got this idea for an F six, but I think it might be a bit silly. And I'd sort of told him the idea, and he was like, No, no, you should you should definitely do that. Oh wow, you should do that. So that was good because that was sort of like, you know what? Yeah, well, so I sat down in the hotel and wrote the first twenty pages, uh, up to when Omar Adrisi showed up, and then I sort of stopped. <laughs> uh, I said, Okay, that's that's not going to work. Uh, and uh, yeah, it sort of stayed pretty much the same, and and just putting it together. So so that was definitely the most fun to write, uh, and sort of that that was yeah, sort of seven and eight were probably some of the hardest, just to sort of piece it all together and try and keep it moving. But yeah, I mean they're they're always kind of hard until they're not. But sort of five and six were sort of Real the, found. The five, yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah, beautiful yeah. It's that, it's that kind of it's that kind of dialogue. <laughs> well, I I actually really enjoyed seven and eight. Even though the first time I watched seven, I was kind of like, wow, now how much is happening here? But I think I was it, still in that sort of overwhelmed from episodes five and six that how much really was happening yeah. kind of went right by me. And so I think yeah. you know. Seven and eight were, are actually pretty brilliant episodes to kind of get us over that hump and set the whole ending up. And yeah. I mean, I always look forward to episode eight and then episode nine tends to be a little bit of a letdown for me. But man, yeah, yeah. it you just kept pounding us with information and action and amazing yeah. performances. And twists. And we were just like devastated after episode six so kudos man yeah yeah, yeah this is certainly i mean, I, mean I, I do feel sort of zayef's plan didn't quite get the uh the time and space it needed but but i also think he was sort of making it up as he went along a little bit because he never expected to be in this situation so th that was quite tricky to have sort of a villain who didn't really mean to be a villain. He'd sort of been pushed into that space and was was trying to live there. Uh, and, and we didn't really know how long he was going to survive or not. There were sort of conversations, should he sort of go into 9 and 10, you know, at what point? But it really felt like Coltrane sort of crossing the line and shooting him yeah. was sort of a, a, an ending. We, we had a conversation, me and John Strickland, with Alec, the actor, about uh, his visions that Zayef had. And we privately agreed that he's not crazy. He can see the future. Uh, so, so that when he's saying, I, oh, I know, I know how I die, 
he knows Coltrane's going to kill him. Okay. Uh, and I, I, that, that's not canon. That's not gospel. That's just so, <laughs> wouldn't it be interesting if actually uh, he does know? You know, maybe he just made a lucky guess. So he sort of knows when he says to Coltrane, you know, can you forgive me? He, he knows what's coming. Well, I just, I really want to thank you for our, for Mahir and Zayaf this season, because I think they were sort of the perfect embodiment of all the baddies along the way, and that we so understood their motivation. Mm -hmm. And as awful as Zayaf was, he was such a, a great figure of, you know, this is what, why people become like this. And things, we can't keep doing this in the world. We keep creating mm -hmm. this yeah. sort of evil. And it has to stop. And I just thought they were brilliant. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe I was the first to cry. <laughs> it wasn't me this time. Victory. Uh, so I, I, I feel bad it wasn't me now, but I'm, I'm trying on the inside. Yeah, I don't. So anyway, uh, I, I thought it was a brilliant wrap to all the episodes and all the focus on vengeance throughout. Yeah, it, it sort of it, it was sort of a nice when I realized early on that the village that Coltrane I was talking about was going to end up being Zaya's village and everything. It sort of it was a nice sort of way to look at the topic without being too flippant and without getting too sort of uh, gory and too kind of uh, yeah, just uh, it, it felt like a sort of an area we could explore without exploiting it too much. Um, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say too. I mean, it's this season has just been fantastic i've spent probably more of it in tears than i have in anything so else sorry. and i really don't want it to end tomorrow um i mean on friday sorry i'm losing track of days yeah well, anyway. now, now you, you have you seen the ending kim or are we spoiling stuff for you here she has it we a... we spoiled it for her so she could come and chat with you so, okay yeah so i haven't seen every all the scenes but i know it's right. going to be amazing i've just okay. made sure i got my baileys ready <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know when you're writing, like, how did you decide to kill off Cheddar's and Mac? Like, is that sort of something that your mind just sort of gets into the flow, or is it sort of more of a we need a <laughs> we need a death a death or two this season uh, to it, wrap it, it up? Like, yeah, I kind of hope it, everyone. It's both. Uh, I mean, Cinemax was certainly. At the start, they said, you know, you should consider doing something shocking in terms of, uh, you know, we'll leave it sort of, you know, up to you. But but you haven't killed anyone last season. And, you know, the, the show has a sort of reputation for being hard and harsh. So certainly, and then after we did kill Mac, they were like, okay, that's, you, you can stop now. But, I mean, I, I think we all know that after you've killed one, you just, you, you get the, the taste for it. And then it's, no, uh, the, 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 the Chetri one was genuinely, you know, I, I know my defense is that, you know, I, I couldn't, you know, I, I wrote it, she couldn't escape. But it was genuinely when I was writing that scene, I suddenly had this horrible feeling that she wasn't getting out and the team showed up. And I, you know, and I remember saying to Nula, you know, I was like, sit Nula, I, I don't think it's going to, I don't think she's going to get out. And we sat there and we sort of talked about it for a bit. And then I sort of wrote it and we looked at it and we were like, all right, I guess she didn't make it out. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that she died sort of, I, I didn't want it to go down sort of, you know, I just shot and fall. You know, it had to mean something. So, so right. that was that was important and, and I hope it did. But uh, yeah, it, it's tricky because you don't know because I mean, I've watched shows where they've killed off characters I've cared about and it's sort of ruined the show for me. And I've been kind of like, you know what, fuck this show, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So it, it's tricky. There was a, yeah, like, a famous one in, sorry, there's a famous one in the UK, a show called Spooks, which I think was called MI5 in the US that yeah. came out and it had an actress who was quite big called Lisa Faulkner in it. And in the first episode, she's undercover with these right wing people and the guy gets her head above a fat fryer threatening her. But she's the main character. She's been on all the posters, so it's fine. Then the head goes in. And I remember watching it thinking, right, so it must be fake fat and she's going to come out. And even <laughs> when it was clearly her face was burnt off and she was dead, I was sitting there in absolute shock thinking, I can't believe they've done that. So there's, there's definitely, but she'd only been in it for an episode. So it's not wow. like she'd been in it for three years. But yeah. 
I was just going to say, I think the worst part, though, with Cheddar's death is just everybody's there. They're they're there. They're ready to save her. There's just this door yeah. they can see her. Cry. And <laughs> that was sorry, the worst. Death. <laughs> and you know, and Anna it's, just goes it's, over. It's Oh, so cool. It's, like, it's, it's so it's, close it's, it's, to getting. Yeah, yeah, and it's her hope. It's like it's going to be okay because it's section twenty, you know, and they always save the day. Yeah. But they don't, Deb. But do they? they don't. They don't. Whenever I see those, like, who would you want build your like team to rescue in a kidnapping? And I'm like, nobody from section twenty. <laughs> nobody, because they might like eventually kill the bad guy, but everyone along the way is gonna die. <laughs> I don't think that's fair because if you think about the doctor at the start that they read, okay, I mean she got <laughs> shot, but she, she you know, but there was Spiegel. The, um, uh -huh, no, everybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wasn't a hostage, was he? Yeah, no, yeah. he was. The, the, yeah. There was the kitchen worker that Novin told to fuck off and get out. She she made it out. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Eight the seasons, one. we found one. <laughs> It does seem, though, that UK television is willing to take bigger risks on character deaths than I think we see here. I told Deb, I think my one of my biggest examples is, oh, God, it's been 10 years ago at least. There was a, a show called, Ro it was Robin Hood, had Richard Armitage yep. was the sheriff. It was so cheesy. I think I literally saw, like, one of the side characters was wearing camouflage and, like, like they'd been yep. and blue jeans, like they'd been told to bring their own like, clothes to set to wear in medieval times. But I, it was so cheesy, but I loved it. And then they killed Robin Hood, and I yeah. was like, and That's then they, it was like his brother that was the star in next season. It only lasted one season, but I was like, what the fuck? You killed the title <laughs> character. Yeah. And I think that was my first realization that. Do you yeah. do you feel that as well? Like when you watch American TV versus. British TV, do you feel that? I mean, there's more tension, I think, with British TV because you, you, there is a different attitude towards that. Uh, may, may, maybe in the past there was, I think, sort of, you know, the state of American television right now is, you know, is incredibly healthy in, in terms of uh, of what it can do. But I think, I think the one I've mentioned before, which you know, I, I, for any American listeners, do do check it out on YouTube, was called Blake Seven, and in the final ever scene of that, they killed everybody. And uh, I remember my mum just being so, it was a sort of sci-fi show, uh, 70s. And I remember my mum just being so distraught by it. She just like stared, she switched off the TV and just sat there staring at it going, how could they do that? And looking at me as if it was my fault. <laughs> I thought one day. One day. Yeah, you teased us on that. Yeah. But, but there's, uh, you know, and certainly there's, a, there's an Irish writer, Garth Ennis, who he created the comic Preacher, which became a TV show, and, and The Boys. And in fact, he almost wrote in Strike Back. He, we spoke to him about it, but uh, he's sort of in a position where he writes one draft and he's done. And once we kind of got into, like, how much rewriting was going to be involved, he was like, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm okay, but thanks. Thanks for asking. But he, he wrote a, a storyline for Hellblazer, which they based uh, the TV show Constantine or Constantine off it. Where in his final arc, he just killed off pretty much everyone he was friends with, to the point where the feeling of this character just getting so exhausted and worn down, and just this tension that came from it, I think uh, that was definitely something I sort of had in mind: is, is how much can we sort of push the team until they're just sort of exhausted and, and there's nowhere to turn, and everyone who can get them out of the situation is gone. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we 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 achieve that. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's, yeah, it's rough. <laughs> you also exhausted the audience, Jack. <laughs> I cried so many podcasts. <laughs> it's been ridiculous. <laughs> All right. Deb, <laughs> you, you gotta help me collect myself. Yeah, it, I mean, I, I, I said this earlier, it really is just hard to believe that it really is over. Yeah. Especially yeah, with that it, ending it that left us sort of like, yeah, it's over, but Jack left the opening just in case. Yeah, it, it, and it, I, I do feel it's sort of a little bit unfairly over. I mean, our, our audience figures are, are pretty good, and, and for, for what, our, what our cost is, is, is we're pretty good. Uh, I mean, I know that everyone's sort of interested in the, the shiny new thing, and we're sort of uh, eight seasons now of, of trucking along, but, but I still think 
you know, and this is certainly what one of the things Cinemax were saying was what they were so delighted with was seeing how much, and, and Sky as well, how much energy and sort of how much ground the show could still cover. It wasn't just a case of let's go through the motions and do one more season. You know, there was still stuff we were doing which we hadn't tried before. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I we would have all definitely come back for at least one more. And, uh, yeah, it would have been a good one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think this was the best season yet i mean it just it went new places it felt like i mean we've said it to people talking they just felt like they let you do whatever you wanted and and uh, you know and i understand that, that may not be true but yeah it was it was incredible yeah i mean more or less uh, i mean they're very good sort of actually for, for the whole sort of three seasons of the reboot sort of both sky and hbo have been really sort of uh, encouraging to sort of just go off and do it and sort of you know you seem to know what you're doing so just keep doing it if you can get them in and write them a little quicker that would certainly help but uh, <laughs> yeah well i think this season definitely because it could have been like so many shows where you know going in going into it it's the last and a lot of people are just like yeah okay we'll we'll just get it in the can and, and move on with our yeah. lives but true strike back form you guys you know raised it another level and when you could have just sat back on your laurels you just kept pushing and just kept making it better the action scenes were amazing the writing was amazing everything was so intense and you know for yeah. for networks to just throw that away is just kind of so frustrating. Yeah, it's a shame. It's, it's a shame, and it's a shame that we didn't... Uh, I mean, there are things I, I wish we could have done in the final episode. I mean, certainly me and Bill discussed, can we do any of these as one-shots? Can we do the sort of entry into the town of the escape from the vault or the casino fight as a one-shot? But it just got to the stage in the schedule where it was just like, we, we can't make mm -hmm. this work. It's not going to happen. So, I mean, certainly the ambition was still there, even if the, the time wasn't. Uh, I mean, something like the casino fight, which we had sort of basically a, a day to shoot it, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was really tough going to get it done. But yeah, I would have loved that to have been a one shot, though. That would have yeah. been, that would have been <laughs> great. But it, it was works pretty out. damn good as yeah, it was. It's so. really damn good. Yeah. And you have some amazing, a couple of really incredible one shots this season. Yeah. So I want to ask you, because, you know, we try to keep it real. It's not just like the love fest about a cut scene from the end because it and I you it's the one you said was the hardest for you to cut and so we we about with uh, Wyatt and seeing his like a little bit of where he'd been in the last four months going sort of dark yeah. and, and mercenary and I think it we, you know, we always sort of laugh about how we want to see all the cut scenes and everything and and I think everybody's response is always like yeah that'd be great but we ran out of time and what the audience doesn't know they'll never miss but I will say, yeah. in this case, I felt like it, yeah. it filled in a hole for me when you said that. Because it was like, we see this darker, 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 darker Wyatt. And then, like, we pick up four months later, and he's like, I don't want to kill anybody. And I was like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck happened? <laughs> and so I'm wondering how but, that decision got made. Because that felt like a really big one to, to lose. Yeah, I mean, it was, it had been taken out of an edit. It, it wasn't one of my notes to lose it. It had been taken out of an edit and it sort of, it sort of flowed without it as well. Uh, I mean, it's one of these things we sort of, you're hitting a deadline and, and you've got to hit a length and then there's sort of, you know, uh, pretty much everyone wanted to lose the woods except from, I mean, a lot of people were sort of voices were saying we should lose the woods sequence, which I, I didn't want to do because I felt, you know, I, I wanted to keep it going and keep it to be exhausting. I, I know there were sort of other people who felt that we could end on the boat and then just sort of get on with it. But I, I sort of loved the woods. And, uh, yeah, I mean, quite possibly it was a, the, the wrong thing to do. And I, and I do feel uh, I, I would have loved to have dug much deeper into sort of what was going on with Wyatt. And, and Dan, to his credit, sort of took what we gave him and, and made it work. But... Uh, you know, in fact, it, I think his performance in those last two episodes, those last sort of four episodes, is fantastic. You know, I think his work is really, uh, you know, especially that last episode in the the bar scene. I think Dan's yeah. just uh, every time I watch it, it's just so such a great. I, I couldn't imagine how it could be better performed. Some of the stuff, uh, but yeah, I, I wish we we dug into that more and shown it more, and, and quite possibly it, it was a mistake. 
uh, not to show that. Well, thanks for letting me ask. Sorry, I don't mean to stir. It just, you know, it's yeah. one of those things. It's such a great, it's a phenomenal season. And it, I was surprised by that. Yeah, and I through. think, I mean, I, mean, I think the, the way it was sort of argued to me was that uh, it, it raised more questions than it sort of answered, which is sort of, I think it, mm. that, that is a sort of valid point as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, I mean they, they are a tricky balance because we're always sort of, five six minutes too long there's always sort of five six minutes of stuff that we we don't want to lose but we have to well, yeah and, and we don't we don't always get it right for sure 90%. well you definitely got it right it just could have been a little bit more right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it could have been more nuanced yeah uh yeah absolutely it was an amazing season it was yeah i mean We've obviously watched these episodes over and over and over again and cried over and over and over again. So I feel like I'm, we have to ask the, you know, the Philip Rapp question here. And I kind of feel like we're asking it for ourselves, too, because it really has been eight seasons of, of watching this and, and going through the, you know, it's been a marathon for us as well, but it's certainly been a marathon for you. Um, because you've been with the show for so long. We know it's a marathon, and you're slogging through shit in rose-colored glasses, so give us your lows and give us your highs for this season or the whole experience. I mean, the, the, the highs are just, there's just way too many of them. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, one of the particular ones was being in that abandoned shopping mall in Malaysia, the one that was just recently closed, and uh, seeing Dan in the bowling alley fighting Chep Chep and sort of realizing, wow, this is what the show is doing. We're in a bowling alley. Here's the guy from the raid to uh, having this awesome fight with Dan. You know, I, I really think the show is on track. I feel good about what we're doing. This is good. Uh, Lowe's. Uh, you know, I mean, there's some tough days. I, I think the ending was quite a low, actually. You know, we sort of ended in this sort of... It wasn't... The the ending in Malaysia, we ended up in the, the lot at the studio where we were filming, blowing up the the place they blew up at the end. And it was a fantastic... And then we all opened bottles of champagne and, and were great. And this season, we ended in a sort of horrible dungeon <laughs> where we're freezing cold, can't wait to get out, everyone's covered in mud. Bill Eagles shouting, that's a wrap, probably forever. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was sort of like, woof, okay. All right, that's that. But yeah, I, I would say, I would honestly say that the lows sort of just disappear. Uh, it's not so much rose-tinted glasses. They just sort of slide into a rose-tinted lake and sort of sink to the bottom. <laughs> a rose. Where they become rose-tinted lake. Uh, yeah, but, but, but the highs, I think the highs were just having the cast we had and, and seeing what they could do and, and the crew we had and seeing what they could do from main unit, second unit, the designs, you know, the music from Scott and Paul. I mean, it's mm. sort of, you're, you're working with such talented people that uh, there were so many times I'd sort of be sitting in an edit watching a sequence or watching it being shot and I'd just sort of start laughing to myself because I've just, I can't believe they're letting us do that. I can't believe we're actually being paid to do this. <laughs> So, yeah, in short, a lot of highs, very few lows. Thanks, and tune in next week for another Need to Know session at the Crib. Follow us on Twitter at Strike Back Crib. Out. <laughs> <laughs>